Hello friends, this video on S block elements part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's discuss the compounds of sodium. The various compounds of sodium, as I told, the first one is the common salt. Let's discuss common salt, which we use in our daily life, daily we, when you prepare vegetables or something, we add common salt to the taste. Common salt is generally obtained from seawater. And if you see seawater, there's a huge salinity, almost 2.7 to 2.9, almost 3% by mass it has salt. If you just heat the sea water or by evaporation also you get salt. If you see many seas in, in the, many countries, just in the sea beach you'll find a lot of salts. But the salt obtained by this evaporation of seawater is a crude salt. It has impurities. To purify, what we do is we have this crude salt, we dissolve in a minimum amount of water and then we try to remove the impurities, right? Just again dissolve in some water, little bit water, make it little bit aqueous and then try to remove impurities. And then how to do is we pass the hydrogen HCl gas, hydrogen chloride HCl gas if we pass, then what happens is the, the sodium uh, chloride, pure sodium chloride separates out. The calcium and the magnesium chloride which are called impurities here, they are since more soluble than sodium chloride in water. So they remain soluble in water, but the sodium chloride crystal comes out by passing HCl gas, right? So you have the crude uh, uh, salt. I just pass, make it a little bit uh, aqueous by put, putting some water and then pass the HCl gas. So with that, the sodium chloride comes out and the impurities are dissolved in water itself. And the melting point of sodium chloride is 1081K, that is 1081 Kelvin, and its solubility is 36 grams and 100 grams of water at the normal temperature. In temperature, 36 grams and 100 grams of water. If we increase the temperature also, the solubility doesn't change much. And the uses of uh, sodium chloride, if you see, it's again a very common use is, is the is, as a table salt we use in the kitchen, and that's why the name is common because it's very commonly used the common salt and it is used for preparation of Na2O2, NaOH, Na2CO3, all these things the preparation common salt is used and this is so common that this is one of the uh, main reason uh, or one of the main uh, news in the freedom movement of India where uh, the Gandhi had, Gandhiji has uh, led a Satyagraha movement and uh, the, the salt law, law was broken by preparing salt in the Sabarmati uh, river. See another important compounds of sodium is the washing soda which again we also use almost daily to wash our clothes. And how to prepare this? What is the washing soda? Washing soda is nothing but Na2CO3.10H2. Please note Na2CO3.10H2 is the sodium carbonate with 10 molecules of water. And it is prepared by Solvay process. We will discuss the Solvay process. And in this solid process, what we do is we know that the sodium hydrogen carbonate is less soluble and it gets precipitated out. So if you see what we do is we have the ammonia, first we start with ammonia, we react with water and carbon dioxide, we get NH42CO3. Once we have this NH42CO3, again we react with carbon and water, we get NH4HCO3, right? Once I have NH4HCO3, what I do is I react with common salt, NaCl. So what I get is NaSCO3, that is nothing but sodium hydrogen carbon. Now from this, I have to take out sodium hydrogen carbon. I know that this is less soluble in the aqueous solution because everything is having an aqueous solution. So it's less soluble, it comes out. Since this comes out, we can use this now, right? So this NaSCO3, you just need to heat it. It becomes Na2CO3, CO2 and H2. Na2CO3 is nothing but my washing soda. Now since it is industrial preparation, I want to bring back ammonia since this ammonia was my input. I want to bring back my ammonia, right? If I just spending a lot of ammonia to prepare a detergent, washing soda, detergent, the, the production cost of the washing soda will be very costly. So I want to bring back my ammonia. So what I do is the solution which is left now because this is precipitated, precipitated whatever is left, it is NH4C is left, I mix this with calcium hydroxide and then I get my ammonia back. 
and the same ammonia is again used now, right? Because ammonia is a little costly, right? So we can't want to lose it. So if there's a moment you react with calcium hydroxide, you get ammonia back, and then you can do it. And here is a good note actually, we cannot use to uh, produce potassium carbonate. We have used to prepare Na2CO3, but we cannot use to prepare K2CO3. Why? Because potassium hydrogen carbonate is soluble in water. It is not less soluble. It won't precipitate. So here if you see, my sodium hydrogen carbonate precipitated because it was less soluble, but potassium hydrogen carbonate, if I have KSCO3, it won't precipitate. It won't happen. It won't come out. So since it won't come out, we can't use this process to prepare potassium carbonate. We'll use some other process if required. We talked about the pro, uh, what do you call it? preparation of potassium carbonate. Let's talk about the property. It is white crystalline solid which exists as dehydrated, sorry, decahydrated, that means deca means 10, 10 water molecules, right? And this is also called washing soda. It is very much soluble water. You must have seen in home in the moment you mix uh, what you call washing soda in water, it, it dissolves quickly. If you want to heat this, if you heat this uh, washing soda, you will see all this water molecule will go off, right? And it will become monohydrated. It will lose the water molecules, right? And if you heat above 373, even the single water molecule, which is right, Na2CO3, you heat normally, it becomes Na2CO3 dot H2. This is dot 10 H2. Now, even if you heat further, 373 plus, you get Na2CO3. And this is white water. It's called soda ash. Let's talk about the uses of uh, washing soda as the name suggests. It is used for cleaning, softening water for laundry purpose. It is also used for manufacture of glass, soap, caustic soda. Right? It is also used in the paper, paint and textile industries. And it is also an important lab reagent. Let's talk about the baking soda. What is baking soda? NaSU. You must have seen the pastries and the cakes you use in all airs, the, the sponge inside. Why? Because we use baking soda to prepare it. So baking soda is nothing but sodium hydrogen carbonate. When you heat this, it gives carbon dioxide bubbles. And these bubbles create the space and the sponginess in the cake. Correct? This is how my baking soda looks like. So how we make this uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate is we know how to make Na2CO3 now, right? The last slide we have seen that. So if we have sodium carbonate, I react this with water and carbon dioxide. I get sodium hydrogen. This is what the slime water you can see, right? And this is less soluble, so it separates out. And it is also mild antiseptic and is used for skin infection. It is also used for fire extinguisher, right? And the third usage, as I told, is used to make cake and pastries. Let's talk about the caustic soda now. Caustic soda is generally prepared by electrolysis of sodium chloride. So what we do in this process is the brine solution that is nothing but NaCl is electrolyzed with the mercury cathode. So this is my Hg cathode and carbon anode, right? So now what happens is the sodium, which is uh, we get sodium here with that mixes with mercury, it forms sodium amalgam. And my because I have NaCl, right? NaCl will break into Na plus NCl minus N, right? So at cathode, it will take the electron becomes Na and it react with mercury, there becomes sodium amalgam, and, and at anode, the chlorine gas, Cl minus will get the electron forms chlorine gas, right? It will give the electron get chlorine gas. So at anode, my chlorine gas will be formed, at cathode, I will get sodium amalgam, right? Now this sodium amalgam that reacts with water. It will form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. So this is the reaction here. Sodium amalgam reacts with water to give NaOH plus Hg plus H2. So this mercury is returned back. Correct? And this is how it looks. Caustic soda, NaOH, this is how it looks. Hope you understand. So what we do is we have we take this uh, sodium chloride solution, we electrolyze this uh, with the mercury cathode and uh, silver uh, carbon anode. With cathode, in cathode we get sodium amalgam and anode we get chlorine that goes off. 
Now what we do is we get this sodium amalgam, we react with water, we get sodium hydroxide and this mercury is back to the system. Let's talk about some property of the caustic soda. It is white translucent solid as you can see. It melts at 591 Kelvin. It is very much soluble in water and it gives a very strong alkaline solution. It is NaOH. Right? The crystals of sodium hydroxide are deliquescent. In sodium hydroxide, if you see solution, I have a sodium hydroxide solution, this at the surface will react with carbon dioxide to form Na2CO3. So NaOH plus CO2 will give Na2CO3. We'll take some uses of caustic soda. It is used in the manufacture of soap, silk, and number of chemicals. It is used in petroleum industry. It is used for purification of bauxite. It is used in the textile industry for uh, moisturizing cotton fabrics. It is also used to prepare oils. You see with the oils we use to prepare oils. It is used also in the lab. Let's do a recap of all the alkali metals. I have the alkali metals lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and calcium. You see the atomic number of these are 3, 11, 19, 37, 55, and 87. The atomic mass increases as we go down the group. Electronic configuration is all NS1 form. Right, all in this one form and the ionization energy decreases as we go down the group the hydration enthalpy also decreases the metallic radius increases the size increases as we go down the group right and uh, the, all the both the radius increases the melting point and the boiling point decreases as we go down the group because the size increases the density also increases as we go down the group because the uh, mass per by radius uh, ratio actually increases as we go down the groove and the electric potentials also decreases as we go down the and we also talk about the occurrence of these uh, alkali metal in the lithosphere. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.